The Philippines and Vietnam have agreed to enhance military and defense cooperation at sea, marking a significant step by the two nations which have overlapping claims in the South China Sea and oppose China's actions in this disputed waterway. Vietnamese Defense Minister Phan Van Xiang says the two sides vow to resolve disputes peacefully and in line with international law. Philippine Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro emphasized that it was important for ASEAN to play a central role in ensuring peace and security, as well as freedom of navigation and aviation in the region. Ms. Xiang also paid a courtesy call to President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The Philippine leader lauded relations between the two countries and emphasized his commitment to elevating ties. This is the Vietnamese Defense Minister's first visit to Manila since assuming this position in 2021. Mr. Xiang's trip to the Philippines comes months after President Marcos paid Hanoi a visit to ink deals aimed at preventing incidents in the South China Sea. Tensions in the regional waters have been escalating in recent months as clashes between the Philippines and China grow more frequent. Earlier this month, Philippine and Vietnamese Coast Guards held their first ever joint exercises, simulating firefighting drills and search and rescue operations. And from what CNA's Berna Bernal joins us live from Metro Manila. Uh, Ber Berna, what we saw meetings today between Vietnam's Defense Minister and the Philippines Defense Minister and the Philippine President itself. What are the outcomes from these meetings? Well, following the bilateral meeting between Philippine Secretary of National Defense Gilberto Tedoro Jr. and Vietnam's Minister of National Defense General Phan Van Viang, uh, Friday afternoon, the two leaders signed that uh, letters of intent. The first one is on humanitarian assistance and disaster relief out at sea, and the second one is a letter of intent on military medicine. So the first a letter of intent expressed interest for a future agreement in bolstering humanitarian assistance cooperation out at sea, jointly mitigating natural disasters faced by seafarers, and jointly acknowledging the difficulty in monitoring activities given the vastness of the deep sea. And observers have noted that humanitarian cooperation among countries who share a maritime border is actually important, even as these two countries have overlapping claims in the South China Sea. Now, in the past, Vietnamese fishermen have actually been reported as extending assistance to Filipino fishermen and vice versa. But for cases of medical evacuation, for example, of faster and larger sea crafts than traditional wooden boats would be required, and that letter underscored the importance of navies in that aspect. Now, to recall early August, the Coast Guards of these two nations conducted that joint training in Manila Bay for the first time, and that was the conclusion of a five-day port call of a Vietnamese Coast Guard vessel in the Manila port. The second letter on military medicine acknowledged the interest of both countries to conduct joint research and innovation for public health surveillance, as well as for the prevention of outbreaks. Uh, they tackled uh, interest in knowledge sharing, as well as the sharing of best practices. And on these both uh, aspects of civil defense. These are aspects that require cross-border cooperation. Now, as expected, the two leaders also uh, renewed commitment for the conclusion of a code of conduct in the South China Sea that would set out the norms uh, in that disputed waterway, the importance of ASEAN centrality, and the importance of ensuring peace and stability in the South China Sea. All right, uh, Buona, of course, uh, Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. stressing the need for ASEAN to stay central to these moves. But in the meantime, before any code of conduct can actually be reached, how else can Vietnam and the Philippines incrementally continue to improve their cooperation? As you just mentioned, two areas, but many more areas in which they can work together. There is a possibility for a case of demarcation or delineation between the uh, countries involved here, Vietnam and the Philippines, in terms of their extended continental shelf. To recall, in mid-June, the Philippines submitted to the United Nations its claim of extended continental shelf in the South China Sea. And I spoke to analyst Lucio Pitlo III, who argued that 
that submission is a precursor for possible negotiations for claimant states and is a peaceful way of resolving that maritime dispute. And he even argues that even if Vietnam, Malaysia, and China challenge that extended continental shelf submission by the Philippines before the United Nations, if Malaysia and Vietnam negotiates with the Philippines, that could potentially put China in isolation. And the reason for that, he says, is because if Vietnam and Malaysia or even just Vietnam and the Philippines uh, go into a case of demarcation, then that puts into question China's claim of historic rights over the land and sea within its 9-now 10-dash line claim, because a possible case of demarcation is essentially a commitment to uphold the United Nations Convention of the Law of Sea, which designates the belt of sea that a country can claim based on distance from its coast. For So for for countries who will possibly negotiate or demarcate their extended continental shelf, it's essentially a recognition of the limits or geographic limits of maritime entitlements uh, under that convention. All right, thanks, Bernard Bernard, outlining the further areas for working together between Vietnam and the Philippines after the signing today of two letters of intent, live there from Metro Minister.